In today's episode of The Road to Unicum, we look at the T-71. This is a Tier 7 American light tank. There were a lot of changes to light tanks in patch 9.18. Notably, light tanks had been adjusted to have normal matchmaking. So here you see from tanks.gg on the left, the 9.17.1 stats versus the 9.18 on the right. And given that the T-71 is still the same tier, the matchmaking did change, so now the tank sees tier 7 to 9 matches, and so the penetration on the silver ammo has been adjusted by 30 for balance reasons, and I think that's totally reasonable. Most of the other aspects of the tank remains the same, it maintains the same hit points. It does lose 10 meters of view range, but that's not too much of a deal at this particular tier. So we're going to look at a couple battles. This first one I'm going to talk a lot about what do you do when your team deploys in a totally poor fashion that makes no sense whatsoever. You know, briefly speaking on this map, a lot of times heavy should go toward the east, toward city. Tank destroyers will sit um, on the back corner in the northwest. Mediums and lights will flex around the middle. And you can see that I'm telling my team where I'm going to spot. I'm going to try to light any heavies that are, are approaching city. So I'm telling my team this in case anyone wants to come with me, and more importantly, so our RD can pre-aim in that direction in case I light anything. Now you may remember back in episode 28 with one of my E25 videos, I talked about the value of doing this. You know, the heavy tanks that are going to be crossing toward the east or northeast toward city are going to be exposing their flanks, so they're really easy to penetrate. You know, even for a tank that has 145 penetration like I do in this particular light tank. The only thing you need to worry about coming along here toward this, you know, E6, E7 area is getting counter spotted. So a tank destroyer did push up pretty aggressively, probably had the same idea that I did. He was going to shoot our heavy tanks that were crossing into the city. But as you'll notice, the only heavy tank on our side who went toward city was a tier 6 VK3601. And I can't stay here. I'm getting spotted now. I don't know by what, but I don't want to get shot by their tanks that I haven't spotted yet that are heading towards city. And they also have multiple arty, so I have to be careful about that. Now a really good thing to do is a light tank. And it's pretty safe for the most part is to surf ridge lines. So just surfing the middle ridge line here from the east side. I want to get a sense of their deployment and see if any of their tanks push toward the middle. As you can see, we've got just got a ton of tanks that are sitting up in the northwest corner of the map. And I can't tell what our heavies are going to do. You know, I'm not sure if they're going to camp or if they're eventually going to push down the 1-2 to two lane. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, it's really important for me to just play my own game and keep my eye on the map. There is one really important thing to know about this map. So, you know, this map isn't a small city map like Himmelsdorf, right? Or in Ansk. And even if, as I'm expecting, they win city, if they try to push out from city across the A and B lanes, we'll be able to spot them safely and get a lot of damage. Now, you notice on this SU tank destroyer, I was pre-aiming in the gap because I anticipated he was going to back up, so I got one damaging shot and then tracked him. He actually has pretty good armor for a tank destroyer, and based on the way he was angled when I tracked him, it would have probably taken about 175 silver penetration to have a 50-50 chance of penetrating. And I do want to talk really briefly. You know, as you guys have noticed through the series, I use silver ammo only. It's not that I'm oblivious of the existence of premium ammo. I sure as heck know it's there. Um, but I want to just briefly talk about why I've been using silver ammo on this account, which is my original WAD account, and not using premium ammo. Um, the first thing really to think about is that premium ammo is really disruptive for balance. Um, specifically, you know, a lot of tanks that have strong armor sacrifice a lot for that armor. So they have poor acceleration, poor agility in terms of, you know, turret traverse, hull traverse, they have low top end speed, um, they often have very poor gun handling. And if you're firing in such a heavy armored tank and you load up premium ammo, you're taking away a very big strength of theirs, um, but leaving them stuck with all the downsides of having to lug around that, uh, you know, that heavy armor. So, you know, I'm not telling you not to use premium ammo. By, by all means, it is a very powerful tool and you know, something that you should employ when the situation makes sense. Now, what I've talked a lot about in these videos is that in the Road to Unicom series is that a lot of players tend to over rely on gold ammo instead of correctly aiming for weak spots and learning those and, you know, taking the right positions, shooting at the right targets, etc. Kind of turn their brain off, load up, you know, gold ammo and just start penetrating and face rolling, right? Um, you know, for pre-made contexts like Strongholds, I have run premium ammo before because it is a more competitive context and, you know, it's sort of expected. I um, haven't done Clan Wars, but, you know, obviously Clan Wars or Tournament Play, it's expected you're going to do those things, right? Um, you can see here, by the way, this 
is what I was talking about earlier. They're tanks that are on city. They've you know crushed our isolated VK-3601, which I was expecting to happen, but they can't now exit city because they don't have anyone spotting for them, and their lone light tank, the T-37, is dead. Now, to my right is that German tank destroyer, but I've put the building between us so he can't spot me, and I'm sitting behind a bush, so I'm always going to outspot their E-2 and their IS platoon. I'm um, going back to the premium ammo conversation and a lot of people thought that hey once premium ammo was made available for credits that kind of you know fixed the pay to win problem and it it did in a big sense in that you didn't have to spend real money in order to fire premium ammo um, but you know the, the issue with premium ammo is it costs five to ten times more than you know a non-premium round right and this is a very cleverly designed you know game mechanic uh, known as a credit sink and if you've played, you know, MMORPGs, you've seen these a lot in terms of, like, materials, mats for trade skills, you know, weapon and armor repairs, etc. It's the same way in this game because credits are the lifeblood of what for a player. You use them to buy new tanks, to buy modules, equipment, ammo, repairs, consumables for getting new crews or retraining or reskilling them, etc. You know, and... Most players in this game are not good enough. Like I'm a unicum, right? But most, you know, the most players in this game, if they're using even a moderate amount of premium ammo, are going to have difficulty turning a profit consistently, right? And so, you know, what it does, it puts pressure on the player to enhance their income. And you know, the most obvious ways of doing that are by paying for a premium subscription, or you know, getting premium tanks. And these are, again, things that in a lot of cases for a lot of players require them to spend real money. So essentially, premium ammo, uh, while many players say, oh, it's, it's totally fine, there's no problem here anymore, it is a pay-for-advantage type of mechanic. It's just subtle. And, you know, for me, since you know I started playing the game back when gold ammo was only purchasable by gold, and I had no intention of spending real money for, you know, magic arrows, I thought that was ridiculous. Um, and, you know, since I started playing this way, many people told me I'd never get anywhere, I'd never be any good, I'd never make Unicum, blah, blah, blah. You know, I decided to go ahead and see for myself how well I'd do. And, you know, it's turned out by and large fine for the most part. There are some tanks that really struggle with silver ammo, um, but, you know, that's a conversation for another day. Now, I kind of have a choice here. I'm opting to flex toward the south to try to help our three tanks down here. Our Tiger P and 122 are one shots, and our RHM is pretty hurting on health. Problem is, I just got spotted there. So if I try to drive south, I'm going to be conceding the first shot advantage most likely because our tank destroyers are sitting, you know, with their binoculars in a bush. And, you know, bad things could happen. If I push down to the south, it's possible that I get shot, tracked, hit by Artie, and bam, before you know it, I'm dead. So what I'm going to do instead is flex toward the eastern side of the map and try to finish off this German tank destroyer, which I've already put a couple shells into and he's pretty damaged or see if I can find the Centurion isolated because I can very easily penetrate his armor. Right, so that tank destroyer is all, all the way going to the eastern side of the map. Uh, really, that doesn't make a lot of sense. If you're at a losing cause here, the last thing you want to do is advance on the enemy. I found the Centurion, and even though he's got me spotted because of the really fast reload of this gun, I'm able to put him down. So uh, let me talk some more about the T-71 for a while because we spent more time talking about the premium ammo thing than I was planning. but. This tank has six shots in its clip. The intra -clip, clip reload is two seconds. So if you have the first shot advantage because you're camo sniping, from the time that you fire, it's gonna take you your first shell, it's gonna take you about 10 seconds to unload the other five shells. So you're basically looking at a 10 second window if you wanna try to unload your full clip when you're gonna be firing. So you know that takes some time to do. Obviously that is still reasonably compact burst, but if enemies are pre-aiming towards you, they can shoot at you before you're done emptying your clip. And that's why it's really important not to be too predictable in terms of where you're poking out and exposing yourself. The other thing to note is that, you know, this gun, the, you know, the auto loader has a pretty fast clip reload of, you know, around 20 seconds. And so what I'll often do, you notice those first two shots that I took on that Hellcat, I went ahead and snapshot it, right? Because normally I just have to sit there and wait for the shot for my first shell to aim in anyway. Why not just fire it? and then you know, try to increase my DPM. Now you do need to be careful about doing this. Um, you know, at, at times when they don't have you spotted and you can safely fully aim in, you should. Um, in that case, you know, the Hellcat and I spotted each other at the same time. I was hoping to finish off that FV already, but he pulled in behind the dead Hellcat that I just killed. So I'm gonna do this reload. I'm gonna go ahead and work my way up and see if I can get the killing shot on this Hellcat. Because the reload on this you know, tank is so low, 
it's great because you can easily top off, you know, while you're repositioning. <laughs> I just bounced off of the Hellcat. Uh, but the, you know, the because it's such a short reload time, it's great because you're not overly punished if you end up re hitting reload. Now we're going to hop into a second battle really quickly, but you know, taking a quick look at the scoreboard, I dealt around 3k damage, spotted for another 2k, and got through most of the match without taking a scratch. And that's mostly by leveraging the vision control, mechanics, camouflage, mobility, pretty solid gun depression of 7 degrees, and not overexposing myself. I think you know a lot of time, something that, that light tank drivers do is they get too aggressive and try to push too early and flank in, in situations where it doesn't make sense. Just like, you know, like when I was spotted by those Hellcats and I couldn't see them, I decided not to push that way. You know, and granted, if I had gone that way, it probably would have been fine and I probably wouldn't have died. But if I die, all bets are off. Like that particular team, I didn't trust them. Now, in this particular battle, what's very interesting is our tanks deployed properly. It wasn't like the last game where, you know, our heavy tanks went in like just like all over the map and they were you know kind of taking forever to get anywhere meaningful which basically takes them out of the fighting for a long period of time in this particular airfield battle our heavy tanks deployed correctly we have a good deployment however i've been watching the map and they are out brawling our tanks on the north hill so even though we had a two tank advantage i know it's only a matter of time before they finish crushing north and you know what was a two tank advantage very quickly turns into a two tank disadvantage and I don't want to go north and brawl with those tanks. That would be stupid because they have armor and if I'm too close, I can see the first shot advantage. What I would do want to try is to leverage some flanking opportunities on tanks that are more isolated. So I finish off that IKV, come down on this French light tank, get the track on him. And he's not firing back. I'm not sure if it's because, you know, the depression's not quite there. It looks like he's looking at me, but either way, I get a super productive clip and I've now dropped him down into one shot territory. Again, the, you know, the clip on this reloads so quickly, and it's great because a lot of times if you've been spotted and you can't risk firing more shells out of the clip, but your clip's not full, you can just hit reload, you know, flex. I just move just a very short distance, see if I get another position and spot some tanks. All right, so in this case, I spot their tank destroyer, their arty, and this VK tank. And I get three shots off before he fires his. Now, granted, I eat a heavy shot in return, but I've just finished him off. I can't push up and over the hill to try to take out the Artie because the 152 has a very big gun and I can't risk it. And as you can see the north map, I kind of predicted this two minutes ahead of time that we would lose that side of the map. I do want to come up here and try to see if I can get some side shots on these tanks. There is an IS-6 up here and you know if I hit him in between his tracks it's possible that I can penetrate him. It's not an easy shot obviously. Uh, but I did finish off their last light tank, and that's big, because you know, now I am going to be getting the first shot advantage if I am leveraging my vision mechanics carefully. In a case like this, you know, I was listening to Zevin's stream yesterday, watching his stream, he made a really good point that it can be really hard to carry in a light tank, because, you know, you just don't have the hit points, you know, and the wherewithal in the armor to do so, um, and you typically need some help, right? So you're going to see some really good play by the IS... ISU-152 has got a monster gun with a 750 Alpha, if I recall correctly. And I was starting to drive to see if I could pick off that FV-304, but the problem is I'm so close that that Ferdy spotted me, right? And the Ferdy's back by an IS-6. You know, I, I could YOLO in there, maybe kill one of them, but most likely die, and it's too early. Now, a really important concept, and I talked about this back in my video on platoon tactics, is, you know, you want to try to set traps and create pinches, right? So these, the Ferdy and the IS-6 are most likely going to travel down the gut along the road, which means at some point I'm going to get flanking fire. And then I spot the SU-152, and this is huge because he was their last tank, kind of holding the edge here uh, on the southern part of the map. So I managed to track him here. I had a few unlucky shots. I don't know where they went. Didn't do any damage. But I managed to track him, and then our 152 polishes him off. Now, the 152, in my opinion, has done the right thing. He's pushing up now and trying to be aggressive. You know, he has full hit points. He can bully some of these tanks and one-shot them because they're at low health, but I can't be too passive. I've got to get to in a location where I can provide some supporting fire from him, maybe set a tank on fire, maybe track them, you know, buy him a little time, or maybe even kill them. So this IS-6 manages to get out of the way before I'm able to lay any more damage on him. The 152 drops down, one-shots the remaining hit points for the 30, and now he and the IS-6 are kind of playing cat and mouse around the rock. What I want to do is get up top and start putting shots into the KV-2. Right, so the 152 just finished off the IS-6. It really is an absolute 
brute in terms of its DPM. And this KV-2 does land a shot on the 152, but, you know, at this point, like, our Churchill managed to set him on fire, I get two shots in, and that's the game. So, C-71 has really quickly become one of my, I'd say, top five tanks of all time, maybe even top three, because it can do everything that I want it to do. It can scout, it's agile, it's fast, it has a very easy clip to manage, it does, you know, decent DPM and decent burst damage. So, you know, I've really enjoyed it. You can see my stats here for my first 100 battles, a 68% win rate, a little over 1,400 damage per match, and almost 600 spotting per match. But I think the really key thing, if you look at the stats, over 1.7 kills per game. You know, this thing, because of the compact damage and the fast clip reload, you'll find plenty of opportunities to dish out the pain and kill other tanks. So, we'll be continuing the Royal to Unicum series. I'm gonna keep putting up videos on light tanks and also probably show you just one ridiculously painful carry with a team that was almost completely uncarryable. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care.